Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about fetal biometry and growth. This is the third video in this video series with title of Fetal Biometry Part 3. What is the outline of this presentation? In video part 2, it was explained the technical points in the fetal biometric parameters measurements. In this video, it will be explained how to assign gestational age in the second and third trimester according to these measurements. The outline of this presentation include assigning gestational age in the second and third trimesters, methods for estimating due date, including clinical consideration in second trimester and clinical consideration in third trimester, and suboptimally dated pregnancy and final teaching points. The first section is signing gestational age in the second and third trimesters. With rare exception, if a first trimester ultrasound examination was performed, especially one consistent with LMP dating, gestational age should not be adjusted based on a second trimester ultrasound examination. In the second and third trimesters, gestational age can be assigned based on a single measurement such as the BPD, corrected BPD, HC, or FL, or an, a combination of measurements such as with composite age formulas. For each of these biometric parameters, there are specific tables can we assign gestational age according to our measurement for each of these parameters. Head measurements that take into account the shape of the fetal head, namely the corrected BPD and the HC, are more accurate than BPD or FL alone in the second trimester. Accuracy of the corrected BPD and HC before 20 weeks is approximately 1.2 weeks. As pregnancy progresses, the accuracy of all measurements decreases such that the end of the third trimester, the accuracy of gestational age estimation by head measurements is about plus and minus three and a half weeks. As pregnancy progresses, also head measurements more accurate than FL in the second trimester. By the third trimester, the accuracy of the FL is similar to that of head measurement. The AC is a poor predictor of gestational age, particularly later in pregnancy, and should not be used on its own to assign gestational age. Composite age formulas estimate gestational age via two or more fetal measurements such as BPD, HC, FL, and AC. The accuracy of gestational age estimation using this composite age formulas is similar to the accuracy of corrected BPD and HC and is more accurate than age estimation using the FL. One drawback of using the composite gestational age formulas is the potential to miss an abnormal measurement or anomaly. For example, if the fetal head is abnormally small and the FL and AC are normal for gestational age, the composite age formula that incorporates measurements of the BPD, HC, FL, and AC will be an underestimation of the true age. In such cases, the interpreter of the sonogram might not recognize the head is abnormally small because its size might be within the normal range for calculated gestational age, which is an underestimate. So, if you intend to assign the gestational age in the second trimester, it's better to mention all details of each biometric parameter in the report including the value of each parameter, the gestational age related to this value, and the percentile. Now, methods for estimating due date. 
This paper was published at 2017 by a committee consist of the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecology, the Association for Medical Ultrasound or AIUM, and Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine. To determine the generally accepted methods for estimating the due date. According to this committee opinion, we will see the clinical consideration in the second trimester. Gestational age assessment by ultrasonography in the first part of the second trimester between the beginning of 14 weeks and 21 weeks of gestation is based on a composite of fetal biometric measurements and has an accuracy of plus and minus 7 to 10 days. If dating by ultrasonography performed between the beginnings of 14 weeks and the last of 15 weeks of gestation varies from LMP dating by more than 7 days or if ultrasound dating between the beginning of 16 weeks and the end of 21 weeks of gestation varies by more than 10 days, the estimated due date should be changed to correspond with the ultrasonographic dating. Between the beginning of 22 weeks of gestation and the end of 27 weeks of gestation, ultrasonographic dating has an accuracy of plus and minus 10 to 14 days. If ultrasonographic dating between 22 and 27 weeks of gestation varies by more than 14 days from LMP dating, the EDD should be changes to correspond with the ultrasound dating. Date changes from smaller discrepancies between 10 to 14 days are appropriate based on how early in the second trimester range the ultrasound examination was performed and on clinical assessment of LMP reliability. Now, clinical consideration in the third trimester. Gestational age assessment by ultrasonography in the third trimester from 28 weeks of gestation and beyond is the less reliable methods with an accuracy of plus and minus 21 to 30 days because of the risk of redating of a small fetus that may be growth restricted management decision based on the third trimester ultrasonography alone are especially problematic therefore decisions need to be guided by careful consideration of the entire clinical picture may require close surveillance including follow-up ultrasonography to ensure appropriate interval growth if the first ultrasound in pregnancy is performed in the third trimester and shows a difference in the gestational date of more than 21 days, the best available data support the adjustment of the pregnancy EDD. Now, what is the suboptimally dated pregnancy? By definition, pregnancies without an ultrasound examination confirming or revising the EDD before 22 weeks of gestation should be considered suboptimally dated. This paper was published at 2017 by a committee of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists. They published committee opinion about how we must manage suboptimally dated pregnancies. Although this committee opinion is mostly related to obstetrician and gynecologists, it's necessary for radiologists to know some of its points because radiologists have to answer many questions of pregnant women. How we must design about deliveries in women with suboptimally dated pregnancy. Consistent with the practice for accurately dated pregnancies, the timing of indicated delivery in a woman with a suboptimally dated pregnancy should be based on the best clinical estimate of gestational age. However, 
there is no rule for elective delivery in a woman with a suboptimally dated pregnancy without a risk for the woman or the fetus that is considered sufficient to warrant delivery elective delivery could introduce unnecessary risk of neonatal morbidity if the pregnancy proves to be earlier in gestation than originally estimated. Indicated preterm deliveries in women with suboptimally dated pregnancies should be based on the best clinical estimate of gestational age. The best clinical estimate of gestational age should serve as the basis for decisions regarding antenatal corticosteroid exposure in women with suboptimally dated pregnancies who are at perceived risk of preterm delivery. Antenatal corticosteroid administration generally is recommended before anticipated delivery between 24 and 34 weeks of gestation. Corticosteroid administration also may be considered in the late preterm period between the beginning of the 34 to the end of 36 weeks of gestation for women at imminent risk of preterm birth within seven days based upon eligibility. There is insufficient data to support a policy for antenatal corticosteroid exposure in the setting of a woman with a suboptimally dated pregnancy undergoing presumed term delivery. Now, here is a very important question that is amniocentesis is needed for fetal lung maturity in women with suboptimally dated pregnancy or not. Historically, amniocentesis has been used to assess fetal lung maturity before the planned delivery of a fetus lacking an accurate gestational age determination in order to mitigate the risk of unintentionally delivering a fetus at an earlier term expected gestational age. Uh, we should be familiar with these terms. Late preterm includes the first of the 34 to the end of 36 weeks of gestation. Early term include the beginning of 37 to the end of 38 weeks of gestation and full term includes the beginning of 39 weeks of gestation and beyond. According to this classification, late preterm and earlier term newborns with mature fetal lung profiles remain at increased risk of adverse respiratory and non-respiratory morbidities when compared with newborns born at or beyond 39 weeks of gestation. Given the lack of reliability for predicting newborn pulmonary outcomes and inability to predict non-respiratory outcomes, amniocentesis for fetal lung maturity is not recommended as a routine component of decision-making when considering delivery in a woman with a suboptimally dated pregnancy. Other specific consideration in suboptimally dated pregnancy during the antenatal care of a woman with a suboptimally dated pregnancy, it's reasonable to consider an interval ultrasonographic assessment of fetal weight and gestational age three to four weeks after the initial ultrasound study. Although this follow-up examination is intended to support the working gestational age, interval fetal growth assessment potentially may detect cases of fetal growth restriction. For cases in which fetal growth restriction is suspected, open follow-up ultrasonography, fetal surveillance with umbilical artery Doppler velocimetry study is indicated and delivery timing should be reconsidered. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. With rare exception, if a first trimester ultrasound examination was performed, especially one consistent with LMP dating, gestational age should not be adjusted based on a second trimester ultrasound examination. 
when we mass change the EDD correspond with LMP dating to the EDD correspond with ultrasound dating. If ultrasound dating varies from LMP dating as below, we must change the date. Between the beginning of 14 and the end of 15 weeks gestation, more than 7 days difference. Between the beginning of 16 weeks to the end of 21 weeks of gestation, the difference more than 10 days. Between the beginning of 22 and the end of 27 weeks of gestation, the difference more than 14 days, we must change the EDD date. If the first ultrasound in pregnancy is performed in the third trimester and shows a difference in the gestational date of more than 21 days, the best available data support the adjustment of the pregnancy EDD. Amniocentesis for fetal lung maturity is not recommended as a routine component of decision-making when considering delivery in a woman with suboptimally dated pregnancy. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.